Bailey Armour and Scott Shapiro here for First Set to talk about the $60,000 carryover in the Santa Anita Pick 6 on Thursday, June 13th. Now, this sequence starts in race four at 5.40 p.m. Eastern, goes all the way through race nine. There's a couple races in the sequence that I'd like to talk about, and we'll go ahead and dive right in to race number six. Took a look at this race. There's two horses in this race that really catch my eye, Scott. I don't know about you. And for me, that's the number eight, Leave Baby Girl, and the number five, Noonie. So the number eight is an O'Neill Antonio Fresu horse. This filly ran just two weeks ago, and she's the only one in the field that's not a first-time starter, which historically has been a pretty decent angle for me, especially when you're looking at these maiden races. She ran that two weeks ago, like I mentioned, held on second for the entire race. And I look, took a look at her female family. This dam has produced six other winners who have earned almost a combined $400,000. So clearly something's going right with this family and this horse leaf baby girl. Also in the race, you've got an Amir Zaydan owned Baffert trained Juan Hernandez ridden morning line favorite three to five, the number five horse Nooney. I think I'm going to try to play against that horse with a little bit longer shot of Lee's baby girl. What do you think? Well, Nooney certainly is going to get hammered. Uh, a $1.8 million Florida bred daughter of win, win, win. I bet she looked the part at the OBS sale down in Ocala earlier on in March, but uh, that one's likely to get hammered for Bob Baffert and Zidane Racing Stables, like you mentioned. Lee's baby girl got hammered on debut, was bet down even money in a six-horse field and just kind of chased that wire-to-wire -wire winner you said ran second all the way around the track, chased uh, Luis Mendez runner. It looks like these two to me, you're a little more brave than I'm going to be to be fading the Bob Baffert runner, but uh, you're certainly going to be able to take out a large majority of the field if you can beat that three to five morning line choice. Three to five is always a funny one for me. Like you get these horses that are so impressive and such a lock and then you never get such a good price. But I feel like now I'm turning into a real horse player griping about the odds that I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> this this filly is probably, I mean, maybe because Lee's baby girl did take a good amount of money and she does have the experience as like you mentioned, which always uh, bodes well and oftentimes can lead to an upset. but. The way they, what they spend for this Nooney filly, and it looks like they've been waiting to unleash her a couple of bullet works, multiple bullet works at Santa Anita. So I think Lee's baby girl probably going to be the significant second choice, but Nooney certainly will be a common single for many Bailey. That's the great thing about these races out at Santa Anita. We've got the XBTV workout studio, so you can watch a ton of these horses work and train in the mornings. Um, I know that's always super fun for me, especially when I'm handicapping Santa Anita. So make sure that you check those out on XBTV and ExpressBet for workout videos from Santa Anita. Now, yeah, closing out the sequence is the ninth race. I've got another two horses in the race. In this race, I'm leaning towards one, but I want to hear your opinion on the second one because I did some research and found some interesting stuff. So the two All horses right. I'm looking at here, we've got the number three, All That Glory, Umberto Rispoli rides for Tim Yak Team. And the number two, L. Ray Ray from the Jeff Mullins barn with Hector Berrios up. Now, this number two is a late closer who's cutting back a furlong from nine to eight furlongs. Pretty decent speed figures and always tends to make a late rally. So I think cutting back to a mile, taking that extra furlong off, might be able to really give them that clinch that they need. I really like the looks of that horse, and I think I'm leaning towards that one. But as I'm going through the field doing my research, the number three stuck out to me. So this is a first sprinter that's gone six, six and a half furlongs. They're stretching out to a mile now. And this is the third start for this horse since May 5th. So third start in a little over a month and a half, five, six weeks. Do you think this is a horse that's kicking the walls down? Second in a black type last out. What do you think? Three starts in, in five weeks says to you. It's a good question with uh, regards to all that glory. Who's going to have to deal with charge for gold? Another sprinter stretching out that's uh, raced four times already this year and showed speed sprinting in all four. So I'm a little bit leery about that one's chances in here. Uh, likely to get caught up in an early battle since he's added blinkers. It's three starts ago, uh, late March. He's been involved in the early pace, and those are at one turn. One of them down the hill. The are and actually none of them were down the hill, but all of them were sprinting over the turf. I like El Ray Ray more of those two because I think we're going to get that fast early pace. You've got the two that we mentioned, Charge for Gold and All That Glory. And then there's some others that uh, are lightly raced and could be tactical as well. So I think it's a pretty wide open race, maybe one of the more wide open events of the sequence to close it out, Bailey. 
but I do prefer uh, those that are going to come from off the pace and you get a good rider upgrade. Hector Berrios will be aboard El Ray Ray for the first time. He's one of the better turf riders out there in uh, Southern California. All right. Well, you always give me such good tips on horses. Now I'm going to hit you up for some more tips on ticket structure. You clearly have tons of experience in this. I'm newer to it. What can you tell me and the rest of our listeners here about how to structure your tickets when you're coming into these you know, relatively manageable carryovers, especially in a pick six sequence. Yeah, you know, I think you got to treat each sequence as its own, but you want to go in knowing what budget, what kind of budget you have, and you got to kind of work from there. A lot of pick sixes, you know, if you have 50 to 100 dollars are tough kind of to, to work within those parameters. But when there's big carryovers, you still want to take a chance. The good thing about this sequence, I think, Bailey, is I do think you can attack it with a limited budget. I think there's a potential single in the first leg with Luther Pass. I think, you know, the race that we talked about, the first one, the sixth, you know, I think you can narrow that down. Maybe you don't want to fade the Baffert runner. Maybe you're scared like I am to fade that Philly. Well, you could go too deep. It's not ideal to use the two favorites, but if you've got some ability to separate. But the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use all the favorites and you don't want to double or triple up in races with favorites often. That's a general rule. If you're doing that too often, you're kind of wasting your money. You're turning two to one shots into four to five shots. That's not really a good way to win. But I think this sequence is playable. I'm going to single in the first leg. Uh, we talked about the sixth. I'm going to go too deep in there. I'm going to get some coverage in the ninth. And then I think the eighth is a uh, race where you can go narrow as well. And the fifth is six furlong first level allowance uh, turf sprint. Also a race I don't think you got to go too deep in. So very playable sequence. I'm actually looking forward to diving in myself, of course, on express bet in the first bet. Now, would you rather single an opener or end on a single? Ah, that is a rule that I think uh, anyone that wants to get serious about playing the horses has got to get past. Treat each leg in its own right. Worry about what, you know, if you're singling in the first leg, that's because you really like that horse. Don't worry about which race has which, which the amount of horses. I know, yeah, you, you get through first five legs and you're alive for thousands of dollars. You wish you had them all instead of just one, but you've got to narrow, you've got to you know, play your opinions within a sequence, pretend that the races are in a, in a random order and you're going to find out later. Never let that, uh, you know, um, sway you on exactly how you're going to play something. Let your opinion sway you and you go from there. I like that. Thinking about them like they're in a random order makes almost kind of takes the pressure off, I think, when you think about it that way. That's a good tip. I like it. Yeah, I think people get too worked up about it. And then, you, you know, and I understand, you know, the one thing is, a lot of people don't like to sing on the first leg because they don't want to get knocked out right away. Well, the positive of that is if you have a horse you're willing to single, especially if it's not a favorite, you get knocked out. You usually have a pick five, right? Right after that. Yeah, pick, pick five, five, pick four, and really... doubles, and you got to go all the way down. <laughs> Plenty of options. Obviously, that's not what you want to have happen, but don't use extra horses in the back end or in the front end just because of where they're placed within the sequence. I think that is a rule that you need to follow 100% of the time if you want to have a chance to win in these types of wagers. Well, we definitely want to have a chance to win tomorrow and all four days of racing at Santa Anita this weekend. We've got the big pick six carryover heading into tomorrow. Additionally, we've got a $2 million rewards point split on the late pick four every racing day at Santa Anita this weekend on Express Bet and First Bet.